Blender 4 is already here, and with it new updates are coming. One of them, if not the most useful one, is the light linking feature. This one was introduced with Blender 3.6 version as an experimental edition, but now is fully here, so let's explore it. Now, what I have on my scene is a simple set of two objects with two area lights and a floor, so you can do a similar build if you want to follow along with us. I will also name the lights into colors to keep things ultra clear for you. The idea behind the light linking feature is to give you full control over which objects receive the light from the emitter, and this one is not a new thing in the 3D world. The option of including or excluding lights from objects is kind of late in Blender, but we're happy it's finally arrived. Before we start with this, we must say that this one feature works only with cycles up until now, but I think they will include it with EV next in the upcoming 4.1, or maybe later. To understand what the light linking do, let us experiment with it. Let's say we select the blue light, and while on Cycles Viewport Render, go to the Object Properties. There you will find the Shading tab. Inside it is three sub-tabs for this light object. The Light Group, not our topic for today, but in case you don't know, this one helps you assign your light to a certain group and get the ability to adjust the lighting after render. The next two sub-tabs is what we have for today, the light and shadow linking. And you just need to understand one to know how this works, because they are the same. So in the light linking sub-tab, hit the new button, a new empty area will appear. While this area still empty, the blue light will affect the entire scene. However, once we drop any object or a collection in this area, it will give us control over the light receiving objects, for example, if I go to the layers and without clicking to not lose the light selection, just grab the monkey head and drop it in the light linking area. Now by default, it will include Suzanne in the blue light and exclude everything else. We can continue bring in other objects like the floor and the sphere to the linking area and include them in the blue light effect. After that, if we want to exclude any object, we just turn it off from the check mark near the name. How cool is that? This also works with collections, so if I make a new collection and drop the objects inside it, then empty the linking area and drop the collection there. This way we can control the light receivers with collections alongside any single object you have, so it gives you full control to navigate around your scene lighting. You can also use this light linking data on any other light, like if we select the orange lamp, we can just choose the blue light linking data on it. And after that, you can make adjustment on each of them separately. And since this one is a linking feature, you could use the linking command with the shortcut control L. So for example, we could select one or more than one object by holding the shift key, then keep holding that shift and select the light at last. Hit control L to open the link menu. At the bottom, we have two new options the link receivers, which is for lighting, and link blockers for the shadows. And we will come back to the last one. As I said, you just need to understand one of them. So while our objects and lights selected, you can go to link receivers and either choose include, this way you add the objects turned on in the linking area, or choose exclude to add them turned off. Now if you understand the light linking, the shadow linking should go smooth. So let's turn off the light linking and press new on the blue light shadow linking. Now if we drag Suzanne to the shadow linking area, it will keep its generated shadow from the blue light. But the sphere shadow will disappear, however. If we turned it off since it's the only object on the list, everything else will get its shadow back, but Suzanne won't. This can help you delete any fallen shadow on other objects to show them in more clear way. Not realistic, but might come in handy for multiple kind of works. Similar to before, you can use the shortcut for the linking command. This time, we will go with the blockers option to include or exclude the object's shadow. One thing to mention is that this light linking feature works also with object emitters, and not only lights. So if we have an object with an emission shader, we can go to the object properties and under the shading tab. 
you will find the same light and shadow linking option and the process is just the same. This one is really cool for interiors since sometimes you want to add an emission for a TV set or any kind of light inside, but don't want it to affect the nearby textures on the floor or furniture. And that's it. Hope you find it fun to play with. Remember to like this if you're still here and spam the video link on the family WhatsApp group. That must be fun. See you guys next time. Stay sharp. Goodbye.